Hello there, my name is Sixo, but more on that later, as right now we've got a spot of monkey business to attend to. We're taking a look at Transart Skateboard Gorilla, which is a new representation of Beast Wars Transmetal Optimus Primal in Masterpiece scale. And really, well... Say the line! That's just prime. Skateboard Gorilla is the first figure from new third-party outfit Transart and sees them tackling a masterpiece-scale version of the fan-favorite Beast Wars maximal leader Optimus Primal. Beast Wars fans will already know that this is a recreation of Optimus's transmetal body, with a metallic blue Gorilla Beast mode and a more organic-looking robot form, and appears to be quite cartoon accurate overall. Optimus Primal is of course one of the main characters in the Beast Wars series, and returns in his new body early on in Season 2 with a new look and some serious upgrades. It may be quite the departure from his more classic appearance, but many fans will be excited to see the transmetal form recreated so faithfully, including that signature flying gorilla formation. What's also exciting is that this is evidently just the first in a line of toys from Transart, who have already shown prototype pictures of a Transmetal Cheetor and a Ravage Repaint 2. Can't wait to see that. Last thing before we begin, today's video comes courtesy of TF Source, so I'll put a link to their site in the video description too. The plan for today is to give you my first impression before getting a full photo review up on their blog soon. Okay, here is Skateboard Gorilla in his box, and uh, really like this packaging artwork, gotta be said. Uh, this purple on here is slightly more reminiscent to me of the Metals version, uh, which we'll do a comparison of uh, today, but uh, still looks really, really great. On the back, you've got the same artwork, but just kind of a line version of it, and then this bit here, which is clearly an attempt to kind of bring the Axelon interior to life. Very excited about this one today. Looks like the uh, tape is just coming right off, so we'll just go ahead and get this guy open. Now, one thing you may not know about me is that I'm an absolute sucker for Beast Wars Transmetals. Love them. I don't know, I just think it all hit at the right time for me, just you know, <laughs> with Beast Wars and everything else, and there was just something about the Transmetal designs that I loved. Uh, anyway, this um, clamshell comes in two layers, so you've got the top layer here with the toy, various faces and other bits and bobs, we'll check those out in just a minute, and then a second layer just here with a, a little base stand and quite a few other bits and bobs actually, much more than I was uh, anticipating. So what's in the box? Well, first of all you get the toy itself, uh, including this little uh, <laughs> kind of protective sheet just here, which rather amusingly makes it look like he's wearing a cape. You get all of this stuff, which is like a flight stand of sorts, so we'll have to go ahead and build that in just a little bit. A pair of very expressive alternate gorilla faces. A pair of equally expressive <laughs> robot mode faces. A pair of mace-like weapons, which look highly reminiscent of the original toy. The character's megaphone-style blaster. And these rather snazzy translucent blue blast effect pieces. So that's rather cool. Ah yes, and there's some instructions for the toy too. Which I think all told feels like a very decent package overall. I mean honestly I was just expecting maybe the maces, uh, the gun, m maybe like an additional face or two, but this? Yeah, it's, it's good. Oh, and it's a silly point, but I do like that they branded this little cloth that was in his back. I mean, you've got to get it right with the merch, no? Anyway, let's take a look at this guy in robot mode. And first impressions are that it does a, a very nice job at recreating Optimus Primal. I mean, it's um, in his transmetal form. It's really funny because, of course, the original toy of this guy, on which this design is quite clearly heavily based, uh, really wasn't that far from the cartoon at all. So in terms of I suppose upgrading the, the original design to a, a slightly more cartoon accurate and, dare I say, almost masterpiece-esque style, uh, you know, I'm, you can sort of see that it's, if anything, it's not required too much change. It's just a bit of tweaking, some more articulation, whatever else. Um, but, you know, it's, it's certainly not a million miles away from that original toy. And I guess in many ways that makes this guy like a perfect jumping on point for this company because in, in some ways it can kind of appeal to fans of the original Beast Wars toys, but also, you know, masterpiece uh, enthusiasts as well. Uh, and just look at that head sculpt. I think, you know, it's a very decent representation of Optimus Primal. I have to say, I really like it. It's not that's similar actually to the original toy. That's probably one of the areas that differs the most. Of course the original toy has a, a real kind of, you know, uh, scowl going on uh, and this is much more neutral. Uh, it is a decent approximation of the cartoon, I like it. Nice details going on there, decent uh, sort of paint and whatever else, it all looks very crisp. It's good. Coming down to the chest just there, and he's a he's a manly old fella, isn't he? Just look at that. You've got <laughs> this little, I don't know, is that an eight pack? Oh, don't even ask me, honestly. Uh, but it's got this kind of nice little faded paint going on there. 
on his uh, on his old uh, moves and uh, some lovely hairy detail everything so uh, and a lot of people may be worrying about this because uh, you know non Beast Wars fans maybe think it's a little bit strange but of course the whole purpose of Transmetals was to kind of flip the original Beast Wars concept so that the robot mode was more organic uh, in nature and that the beast modes were more technological or robotic looking. That was the, the kind of initial premise anyway. <laughs> it kind of got a bit blurred along the along the way, but that's why uh, that's why this looks so organic in nature for robot mode. Now, of course, we're going to talk about chrome quite a bit today, but there's some really nice shiny detail on the shoulder just here. Uh, it looks very crisp and well applied. Really decent molded detail on areas such as the arms and things like that. And actually, these arms aren't quite silver. They've got a kind of slight hue to them. I want to say it's got like a slight not green tinge, but certainly it's darker than uh, than just straight up silver. It looks nice. My copy does have a couple of little hairline scratches in some areas, just like that. You can uh, you can see them in the light. You know, it does kind of catch the light, but um, it's not too bad. Then, of course, coming down to the legs, you know, they kept things really simple. This is so on point, the original toy. It's it's just not even funny. It is literally like, I think if you didn't own the original toy and hadn't seen it in years and then picked this guy up, you could almost be forgiven for thinking it was that same toy. Do you know what I mean? In your, in your mind's eye or whatever else. Uh, and of course, one thing to really note is the blue chrome, which looks nothing shy of spectacular. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we're going to talk about chrome a lot, as I already said, and uh, woof, it looks really quite something. Coming around to his little backpack, the bit that folds over the uh, obviously the monkey chest just here, it's got some nice molded detail again, looks on point. So yeah, on the whole I think this guy presents really nicely right out the box and I'm sure a lot of that is that kind of nostalgic feel that you do get off him. Uh, but you know, all the paint looks good, all of the, the kind of smaller details, everything, um, you know, it's nice and uh, actually I do think as well that it is a, a very close approximation to that cartoon model. So, uh, you know, whatever little upgrades they have done, it's appreciated. Now one thing I will say is that actually he doesn't feel very heavy at all, which is, uh, I guess, a surprise and not a surprise. Feels very reminiscent of the original toy again in that regard. Uh, and certainly he feels a lot lighter and kind of more hollow in parts than, you know, some of you more typical masterpiece style figures anyway. In fact, it's inspired me to do something that I never do in these unboxing reviews, and we're, we're going to weigh the things. So we brought in the original toy, we'll do a full-on comparison in a bit, but let's see how heavy they are. Right, I brought in my trusty kitchen scale, so here we go. This is the original Metal Monkey, and he weighs in at 183 grams. And in the other corner, we've got Transart's copy, which, let's have a look. Okay, 307 grams. So yeah, he is heavier, he just doesn't feel as heavy as maybe I expected. Now I've got to say, with the weight difference and actually having these two in hand finally and doing a, a quick comparison myself, I can honestly say that this is not a KO. And, and I sort of mentioned that because maybe some people already knew, but you know, I, I wasn't really sure myself, just from pictures and whatever else, it was, it certainly came across anyway, like this guy was just some sort of like knockoff of the original toy. It obviously borrows a lot of design influence from that toy, but um, yeah, it, it's a wholly new product from what I can see anyway. So uh, really, really interesting, particularly with how slavish it actually is. I mean, again, you could honestly be fooled into thinking that this was that original toy if you didn't know better. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely seems to be a wholly new design, which is cool. Now, of course, one of the significant upgrades of this guy versus the original is the articulation, because there is a lot, lot more. I mean, for starters, with the head, it can turn from side to side, much like the original toy, but there is a bit of up and down motion that's available as well, so that's pretty cool. Now, of course, the uh, arms on the original toy were already exceptionally articulated, and it's much the same story here, actually. You've got nice clicky ratchets at the shoulders, just there. They go all the way around and in and out, and whatever else you want them to do. You've got a bicep swivel just there, and you've got elbow articulation that goes just a little Little bit beyond 90 degrees. Now of course the hands are where there's uh, the majority of the extra articulation going on here because of course the wrist is on a ball joint so that's got a lot of free motion there. You've also got a thumb on a ball joint as well and then all of the fingers are articulated. You've got an individual forefinger just there with articulation at the main knuckle and then halfway through so that you know can bend quite a lot and then the other three are exactly the same except they're on one molded piece but all told a lot of articulation in the hands. We have a waist swivel which I'm sure we'll need for transformation and then as far as the legs goes again it's quite a similar story to the original toy if anything you've got very clicky ratchets at the uh, at the hips and there is a little swivel just there as well uh, on the leg so quite a bit of articulation going on that's actually additional to the original toy uh, then you've got very decent bend at the knee just yeah actually if you take that into account as well for transformation then you can actually get the knees to bend all the way back but all told the knee joints themselves actually just bend just maybe just a little touch over 90 degrees and then you can kind of cover up that gap a little bit just with those uh, those monkey feet gorilla feet uh, and then uh, his robot mode feet 
uh, are on ball joints. So that's a bit different. You've got a bit of ankle tilt just there, which is very, very cool. Uh, and you can move the feet all the way back like so. All of which means he's pretty articulated on the whole. I mean, I, I maybe would have liked a little bit more just at the elbows just there, but really, you know what? It's great, honestly. I mean, it, as I said, the original toy was articulated to begin with. This just uh, really takes it up a notch with stuff like ankle tilt and whatever else. It's, um, it's really good. And the joints are fairly good on the whole. I mean, there is a bit of give here and there, I will say. I could do with a couple of them being a bit tighter than they are, particularly the ankles. Uh, managed to get him into a run just here, as you can see. So that's a good indictment, at least, of, uh, of how solid and stable you can get him to be. But that did require a little bit of um, thoughtful posing, let's say. You can't just jam him in any old pose and expect that he's going to hold. Uh, so yeah, ankles, a little bit in the hips. There is a bit of sway in some of those joints, I will say. They're not like rock solid um, but overall it's really not bad and he can definitely hold a pose just you know you might need to kind of think about how you balance him that's all right well let's go ahead and check out some of the accessories with this guy and first up you've got his uh, as i said his foghorn style blaster uh, it does look really on point versus the character's original gun really really like it and the color that they've used uh, this one actually has a light up gimmick just there so you press the little button on top and as you can see it's uh, already batteries installed and included and everything else so that's really nice because uh, that's about the only time I ever use these kind of light up gimmicks myself, to be completely honest, but uh, very easy to execute. Uh, and of course, what you can do with this is uh, several things. You can actually include uh, these blast effect pieces like that. So this is actually two of them. You get this sort of longer piece here and the, the kind of bit that comes straight out the gun, just like that. And then, of course, those light up quite nicely, just like that. I think that looks really really quite cool actually that's one of the best effects of um uh, the one of the best uses of these sort of blast effect pieces that i've seen uh, and then of course you can also use the larger ones like this there we go if that's your preference uh, i think the other one looks better actually that looks a little bit doesn't quite light up as much around the edges but still very very cool needless to say uh, and then of course you can if you prefer just not have that middle piece uh, you've got a lot of options uh, for that. Uh, what you can also do, interestingly, is uh, you can plug the mace weapons in like that, so as a sort of missile. Uh, and on the original toy, of course, it went the other way around, so that this end was actually plugged into the gun and that the mace piece was sticking out. Uh, that's how that, that, that was one of the gimmicks of the original toy. So here, it's just a little bit different, but still, if that's your thing, you can do it. Then, of course, you just want to go ahead and plug his gun in. There's a little uh, peg in the middle of the palm. Uh, interesting on this one, the peg is actually in the palm itself, and the peg hole is on the gun, so that's a little bit different, but it does fit yeah, relatively securely. You'll need to press it in a bit. Yeah, I think with that all armoured up and uh, the flame thing turned on, I think that looks really, really cool, actually. I really like it. Uh, again, I'm not always uh, you know, a big user of those blast effect pieces, but with the light-up gimmick as well, it works really nicely. Now, of course, a signature part of the original toy and indeed the character in the cartoon was that you could store the gun on the hip. And you can do the same here. It's a slightly different method. It's not a peg anymore. It's just this little clip and it goes on very simply like that. I think that works really nicely, actually. It looks kind of kind of cool. Now, what is strange is that there's nowhere for these mace pieces to plug into his robot mode hands. So I guess that's um, exclusive to the gorilla mode, as we'll see. Now, of course, what you can do instead is plug them on his back like so. For a handy bit of uh, weapon storage and you know between that and the uh, the gun on his hip i think he looks really really cool with all of his various weapons kind of uh, in situ fans of the original toy though will know what this also means which is that you can take this whole backpack section and flip it over to the front like so then you just need to position his hands up into the right place and then voila you've got his uh, well in the instructions it's called super firepower mode I don't, it was never given a name in the show of course but this is just where his whole back section basically comes around to the front as a kind of uh yeah super firepower mode <laughs> what a good name for it i uh, really really like how that looks i think that's very very cool uh, i like that you can use the blast effect pieces on here as well i wasn't expecting that but that's uh, really quite clever do wish that there was some way of just tabbing in his hands i mean that's very reminiscent of the original toy just the way that these kind of shoulder shoulder pad sections just kind of go over the um, over the knuckles but you know I think given that this is a kind of updated attempt and uh, there was a, an opportunity to add a little something there maybe it would have been nice to have some way of actually attaching the hands to it just so it actually felt like he was holding those bits um, I don't know if it was just me but what I always liked to do on the original toy was flip up 
um, the bits from his knees as well, which of course are the bits that the uh, the skateboard in his gorilla mode kind of connects to, and kind of imagine those uh, as kind of you know little gun ports as well. Uh, was that just me, or did anybody else do that? I can't I can't sort of imagine that uh, that it was just me that dreamt that up. I don't know. Anyway, I think this looks really cool overall, and of course it's a nice callback to Coming of the Fusors Part Two, which was uh, Transmetal Optimus's first appearance in the cartoon. But yeah, it's a blast. Right, well, let's check out this face swapping gimmick. And uh, actually seems to be fairly simple because all you do is take off this sort of front part of the uh, of the face like that. Ugh. <laughs> uh, and then this uh, middle bit, of course, just unpegs like that. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and put in the angry face. First of all, angry, angry. There he is looking very angry. Uh, it just looks so wrong without, <laughs> without the sort of face cover part, without his eyebrows, right? It's horrible. Uh, anyway, there we go. All all in place now and uh, certainly better. Gotta say, I wasn't sure about this angry face when I first saw it, but now it's on and with the, well, certainly with the eyebrows in place. I love it. I really, really love it. He just looks like he's, uh, I don't know, he just looks like Rat Trap said to something really stupid, doesn't he? <laughs> he's just brilliant. Absolutely love it. Kind of somehow less convinced about the smiling face though. Still really nicely done. It's just a bit goofy. I don't know. It, does it suit the character? I guess it does to some extent. It, I just think the smile itself doesn't quite work for me as well as the angry one. Now we're going to leave the angry face in place for now because uh, firstly I really like it, what can I say, uh, but also it makes for a very fitting comparison to the original toy which you can see here. Now as I've already mentioned uh, or hinted at earlier this is actually the Japanese version, the Beast Wars Metals version, which is exactly the same to the Hasbro toy uh, apart from the colours because it's got this kind of more, uh, sort of, is it magenta? I don't know, kind of more purpley style. Someone pick me up in the comments and tell me exactly what colour it is because you know I'm, I'm rubbish with these kinds of things. I always have to ask my wife. Uh, she's far better than me. But uh, it's kind of got this translucent quality to it as well, a little bit sparkly. But I always feel like this Japanese version is a bit more rep representative of the cartoon. And you can see that actually they have kind of colour matched that quite nicely, if anything. Um, it's not quite as, as deep and rich as this sort of magenta. I'm going with magenta, that kind of colour. But it is quite nice and uh, representative. Uh, and overall, I think when you look at them in comparison with one another, you can see that, as I've already mentioned, Transart Skateboard Gorilla is definitely not a KO of the original toy. It's a wholly new design. That's evident in areas such as the chest. You can see it straight away just there. Even the hips, the legs, the arms, everything. It might be very, very, very similar. Uh, and it might clearly be, you know, using this original design as a very close template, but it is indeed a wholly new mold. So not a KO, not just a, an oversized KO or whatever else, uh, a wholly new design. And I think in that regard, they've done something really smart here by not flying flying too far away from the original design because you know it's going to appeal to fans of that original toy it's going to appeal to fans of the cartoon masterpiece fans whatever else you know what can i say i think they've they've taken this thing which i love really love this guy what can i say it's absolutely fantastic a, a toy and uh, but they've taken it and um upgraded it made it bigger and it works, you know, I really like what they've done with this robot form. And in terms of other comparisons, here you can see them with a couple of the uh, recent Beast Wars Masterpiece toys. You've got Cheetor and Dinobot, and uh, yeah, he's big, uh, <laughs> almost as tall as Dinobot, which to my eye is about perfect. Obviously Optimus was never, well, other than the, uh, his final form, he was never the tallest in the, um, in the Beast Wars show, and uh, I think this works pretty, pretty well. Now, of course, Transart also have a Transmetal Cheetor on the way as well. We've seen it teased. That looks excellent. Cannot wait for that. Um, but really hoping that we'll get a Transmetal Rat Trap out of them at some point as well, or indeed someone else. And uh, But for now, here you can see them with the Legends versions of Rat Trap and Rhinox. Uh, please, someone make a decent masterpiece style Beast Wars Rhinox. I do like the Legends figure, but man, way too small and just a bit too stylized. Someone needs to give us a decent Rhinox, preferably to Karatomi, but hey, I'm willing to take whatever at this point, but uh, still, you can see him with these two here. We've got him here with a couple of Predacons as well, and you've got Masterpiece Black Arachnia, and the again, the Legends version of Waspinator, which actually I do think makes a pretty decent Masterpiece stand-in. If you've not checked it out, then uh, maybe have a look at that one. But you can see there, again, pretty large guy. Even taller than something like Masterpiece Lyo Convoy, which, um, God, do you know, actually, I was just remembered, thinking back, this was the first unboxing video I ever did was old Lyo Convoy, and that was what, in... April? May? I think it was maybe even May, I can't remember. It seems like a lifetime ago. <laughs> it was only like a little over sort of seven months ago or something. Absolutely mad. Not as big as the uh, the Bamoeth that is uh, Metal Beast Wing Dragon though, which you can see here, which I really need to, to do a bit of a review on at some point as well, because it's just absolutely 
what a thing, honestly. Um, but it just it does make me think that actually third party uh, getting in on um, sort of masterpiece style Beast Wars like this is. Uh, it's great to see. Speaking of which, here he is with Perfect Effect Optimal Optimus, and uh, and of course, indeed, the uh, the actual masterpiece Optimus Primal as well, the uh, which of course is his original show design. You can see all three of them together here. Now, in truth, the Perfect Effect toy is nowhere near large enough to re accurately represent uh, Optimal Optimus from the show, but still, it looks pretty cool. It's a, it's quite a stylized take. I do like that toy quite a bit. But you can see at least the three. Uh, representations of Optimus Primal in his Beast Wars modes uh, that we have so far. And final comparison for the robot mode is with this guy, it's MP44 Convoy, of course the G1 Masterpiece Optimus Prime, and uh, yeah, I just thought it might be interesting because I do feel sometimes that if you don't collect Masterpiece Beast Wars it's not always obvious just how big some of those toys are, but there you go. So all told I think the robot mode is a bit of a smash actually. I uh, really wish it was a little bit more stable, I have found that he topples over a fair old bit. Uh, it's no nothing to do with the feet or anything like that, there is, you know, it's not back heavy, it's just literally that the, um, I don't know, it just topples, the joints don't quite have that sort of solid solidity to them that I might want, but uh, you know, he can hold a pose and whatever else, I just wish that they were a little bit more uh, kind of rock solid than maybe they are. But he does look really really good and I really like him. So let's check out transformation to gorilla mode. <laughs> Okay, and here we go. And uh, transformation-wise, I mean, it's identical to the original toy. What can I say? If you have that original toy, you know exactly what you're in for. There's really no surprises. The only, uh, I suppose, slight variation is how the arms unfold, because uh, in the original they split apart at the sides, of course, and here, you know, it's a panel on the top and the bottom. Uh, other than that, it's pretty much identical. Uh, oh, I tell a lie, actually, maybe the way that the chest kind of unsplits, but in theory, anyway, exactly the same. And uh, it's, a, it's a very smooth result, what can I say? It's a fun process, I, I enjoyed it on the original, so why not now? And what can I say? The Gorilla Mode looks superb, really, really striking. I mean, obviously that blue chrome is just gorgeous. <laughs> Really love it. I, I was always a massive fan of the chrome on Transmetals. A lot of people are very nervous about chrome and Ooh, chrome, you know, but I, I don't know. It, it, it isn't annoying when it chips and whatever else, but certainly when it looks as spectacular as this, it's uh, it's really, really nice. Uh, and, and, you know, I've been over it with a bit of a fine tooth comb. Uh, hello. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's looking certainly very on point, has to be said. Uh, no concerns so far with this guy in terms of the chrome. Uh, and, uh, you know, for my part, it's... Um, it is Optimus Primal from the show, brought to life. I mean, just check out that for a face sculpt, right? I'm sorry, but that is perfect. That is literally nigh on perfect, uh, in my opinion anyway. But I think that just looks spot on to the cartoon. In a way that the original toy actually, because of the uh, kind of cheesy grin that it had and whatever else, which we'll see, uh, you know, this uh, feels like a bit of a departure in that respect. And actually, I think they have tweaked the proportions, the design a little bit to just, uh, dare I say, ape the animation a little bit better than um, uh, than that original figure. Uh, and this, to me, is everything. I, I just love the look of that. Really reminds me of some of those classic episodes. Uh, love it. Some of the finer details are looking good too, like this little red painted section just there, which of course is, um, again, a nice callback to the toy and the cartoon. Shoulders in this mode have got some more red sparkle to them as well. And then you've got his, uh, his ickle little gorilla feet just there. Cute as they are, it's a, it's a weird design, isn't it? Let's be fair. I mean, it was weird on the original toy, so it is here. Uh, now, what I've done, of course, is I've um, put the little pipe sections out to the front, and I suppose I did that intuitively just based on the original toy, because that's what you're supposed to do. But actually, Transart in their instructions, and indeed in their promotional photography, have them at the back. And I suspect that is because 
it's going to help with a bit of stability because actually it does have a bit of a tendency to rock backwards it's fair to say um there are they have included a, a slight bit of new design with those little tabs that are just on the inside of these feet that plug into the uh the kind of back of the robot no robot mode knees so that does help a little bit otherwise it'd be toppling forward um but yeah i feel like they could have upgraded that a little bit more than they have maybe and yeah here they are out to the back and actually yeah it really does help a lot with stability i mean he's um he's got a little wobble to him but actually i think he feels very solid overall uh so i guess it's just your personal preference it will hold with them out to the front if that's indeed the look that you prefer uh, and some people will i'm sure um or you can just have them out to the back like that like they're meant to be and then you get that little bit of extra stability as well and then of course if you really want then you can position him like this with his knuckles out you know resting on his knuckles as well uh, i guess you could just untap the feet there and have them kind of lurching forward that might help a little bit with posing as well um, but on the whole i think this looks pretty pretty you know pretty good and uh, the fact that the robot mode head can now look up is a major boon because you couldn't do that on the original toy so that's pretty good uh, and i'm sure some people might be feeling that these very visible robot mode legs at the back just there are slightly unsightly um but it is what it is. I mean, ultimately, it was part of the original toy's design. It's part of the animation model as well, because of how cartoon accurate that toy actually was. Uh, and so, lo and behold, Transart have copied it for this as well. And, uh, it, you know, don't blame them. It's, it's kind of a quirk of the uh, quirk of the design, if you will, the actual character design. Uh, and it is accurate to the source. Now, again, in this mode, the articulation is the, uh, the main upgrade here. And of course, that, a big part of that is the head, which this time can move pretty freely. It's on a ball joint, so you get a lot of range of motion uh, at the head just there. And, and again, I really feel like that is, you know, a huge deal breaker in terms of upgrading that original design. It's really, really appreciated because of course on the original toy, the head was just stuck in place. Uh, it is no longer so here. So that's really, really good. Um, arms and everything else are exactly as you would expect. Uh, but of course, again, you've got articulated hands in the gorilla mode as well. I'm not going to show off all the articulation because it is essentially the same as the robot mode, but you get the idea. Needless to say, he's pretty poseable on the whole. I mean, again, I think the feet are kind of the really um, kind of slightly lackluster aspect of that. I really feel like they could have done more with that and maybe a bit of, I don't know, ankle tilt or something for the, uh, the gorilla mode. That would have been nice. Um, but, you know, on the whole, it's an upgrade and it looks great. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at the uh, alternative faces for this gorilla mode. And I was going to try and unpeg the thing on camera but there was too much swearing involved honestly because it's exceptionally hard to pry the stock face out of there it's kind of on this little peg just there and then two uh, sort of slightly larger pegs at the bottom and they are so tight it is crazy so i honestly thought it must be glued in or something at one stage like i really couldn't get it out um i, I was genuinely going to call it quits and then i just about managed to pry it at the last minute now i haven't pushed this one all the way in because i am honestly nervous about about getting it out again but um there you go you can see the angry face it looks really quite expressionful and uh i like it i mean it's a little bit goofy a little bit goofy i won't lie but um on the whole it's fun it simply doesn't compare to this one though because <laughs> That is just perfect absolutely perfect again really feel like they've nailed it with this um smiling smirking face it's just uh, spot on to the character uh, and the cartoon absolutely love it now what you can also do of course in the gorilla mode is peg in these mace weapons and i fully expected to see a different tab system here actually uh somehow to to kind of accommodate that but it seems all you do is actually just kind of wrap the fingers around the posts as tightly as possible like so so i guess he probably can hold them in his robot mode after all either way though robot or beast they're not the most stable i mean they will hold and again if you wrap the fingers tightly enough they will they will stay but i do feel like yeah there you go they're just <laughs> you know a little bit of um a little bit of movement and they're going to come right out so uh, a little bit of a weird design maybe of course the gimmick i'm naturally very excited about is the uh the skateboard of, of the <laughs> the character's name the toy's name um but actually i i take umbrage with that because it's really not a skateboard at all. It's more of a surfboard, right? Like if we're going to get really technical about it, uh, then, you know, let's get these things right, of course. Uh, so you just fold out those bits to the side, of course, they're the robot mode legs. And then these little bits, the, uh, the sort of tubes that I mentioned earlier, the pipes, they fold out like that. And then you just want to connect them up. And of course, this is all functionally exactly the same as on the original toy. Uh, so it leaves you with this... Uh, I'm going to call it surfboard, this surfboard just there, flying surfboard, uh, that, yeah, very silly, but <laughs> it works. Then, of course, what you want to do is just slot his gun into that little peg hole, 
just like so there we go and lo and behold surfing gorilla there you go now he's not the most stable in fact he really won't stand uh, at all i mean you can kind of balance him uh you know with a lot of thought and whatever else but he's just going to topple a little a little gust of wind or whatever else uh so we'll go ahead and check out that flight stand but there are a pair of wheels underneath as well uh you know same as on the original toy they don't really roll it's fair to say like I, i've not been able to get that to roll successfully but overall i think this looks pretty good now with the flight stand what you want to do is firstly connect these two base plates together which oh requires a bit of force there you go and of course you want to take one of these pegs and just put the little bits the little connectors on the end. There is a male and female end, so uh, you have to get it the right way around. And I think what is cool with these is that obviously you can bend them, but there's this little button just here that you have to press in order for that to happen. So that's gonna help a little bit with stability. Uh, if you try and bend it without pressing the button, it's not gonna go. Then just peg that arm into the flight stand and then just put this uh, rather unfortunate looking adapter into uh, the hole on his bum. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Then of course you just connect one to the other at the end like so. And there he is on the flight stand. And I think that is exactly what I wanted. I think it looks terrific, honestly. Uh, there definitely is a bit of wobble to it. Um, you know, you can see there he's in for a little bit of a bumpy ride, but actually that kind of adds to the effect, <laughs> if anything. Uh, it doesn't need to be more stable than that, I don't think. Uh, and I do think that this thing looks really good, actually, from every angle. Uh, I think they've really captured the, the surfboard gorilla, skateboard gorilla, whatever you want to call it. I think they've captured it really nicely. I mean, it is ridiculous. Let's not be, uh, you know, let's not be beating around the bush about it. Totally ridiculous as it is, but they've certainly made the most of it. Very, very cool. Now it's also worth mentioning that there are indeed a couple of other uh, adapters just here and, and some extra arm pieces. So you could make a really long arm if you wanted. You can connect them, well, almost all together uh, and have that, or you, you know, maybe use it on some other toys, whatever you want to do. I don't know, you can experiment it with a little bit, but you do get all these extra pieces. So that's quite cool. Should you prefer though, what you can also do is plug them into the base like that they have to go at the right angle uh, and then you can actually use it as a bit of <laughs> a bit of weapon storage just like that um, for things like the uh, the little blast effect pieces of course those blast effect pieces can also be used on the gun again in this mode and you can turn the light on like so and then that really helps to make him look like he's flying so yeah with the maces in place the light on the flight stand everything it looks really really cool this is what you could never really achieve with the original toy to be fair because um well firstly the guy couldn't even tilt his head uh, so <laughs> he was always kind of i mean you could twist it at the waist slightly and kind of compensate but he was always sort of stuck looking to the side it never really worked in that regard uh, but this is i think for beast wars fans just absolutely fantastic solution uh, i think it looks it looks excellent now where would we be if we didn't do a comparison with the original toy in eight mode of course and uh, yeah i think just like with robot mode it's when you stack these two guys together that it becomes really really clear that it is not just a straightforward uh, you know, upscaled version of the original toy, as you can no doubt see. And it's really when you get in on the smaller details that that becomes even more apparent. I mean, just looking at the blue sections like here, you know, this blue here is much more simple, very, very simplified compared to this, which has got a lot more molded detail going on, on it, uh, in on it. And, um, you know, that again, that brings up much closer to the animation. Same is true with the feet down here. You can see it's, it's not got all of the kind of little molded parts just on there, um, but even on the legs, and the arms you know it takes the slightly more simplistic route and does look more cartoon accurate as a result and um, that's also true of the head which you know this is much more kind of animalistic in nature uh, dare, dare i say it, a little bit more primal perhaps <laughs> and does look a bit more like a like a realistic gorilla face uh, or well maybe about as <laughs> as realistic as uh, as this one does anyway uh, whereas this guy here looks a, a lot more like the cartoon ultimately um so you know various changes going on various kind of little upgrades and things like that from the original uh which i think is really appreciated and, and obviously kind of you know makes this new version worthwhile overall i think on the whole then there's very realistically very little i can say that's outright bad about skateboard gorilla i think they've uh, they've done a great job it was a it was a fantastic design to begin with they've upgraded it overhauled it and and just done everything that they needed to with it probably my only downside is the gorilla mode feet which i do feel could have been uh, maybe just uh, kind of embellished a little bit more let's say but other than that this is a, a really nice product i think it goes great with masterpiece toys it is without a doubt a toot.
So that's Transart Skateboard Gorilla. Fantastic stuff indeed. Now I'll put a link to TF Source's listing for this guy in the video description, and I'll be aiming to get the full photo review up on their blog soon. Otherwise, that's it from me, so don't forget to drop me a like if you enjoyed today's video, and have a great rest of your day. TTFN. <laughs> <laughs>